Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Right, today we are going to do a trade breakdown on euro dollar so a trade that i took for 25r um and i think this is just a really good trade to share with you guys i think you guys will hopefully take a lot of value from from this breakdown um, because this is just a really good example of where you can you know take trades intraday you don't have to hold them for days or even weeks um, to make really good returns also this trade is heavily heavily counter trend to the higher time frame uh, trend um, but, you know, we weren't just trying to catch a falling knife. Uh, we waited for a lot of confirmation, um, you know, waited patiently and then, you know, striked when the moment was when the moment was right to to capitalize on a very high probability trade um, and then knowing where to exit that trade with confidence, um, you know, to try and get out uh, where those higher time frames are likely to, to turn and continue that bearish trend. So, as always, let's start off up on the old higher time frames and um, we'll do a little bit of bar replay as well. Uh, to bring this back. So let's bring it back to around this point and then let's quickly hop up to the weekly chart. And as always, what I'm going to do is just really slowly go through you know, how we build the higher time frame story, how we actually arrive at those, those POIs, those points of interest in which we then you know, want to execute um, our trades from, right? And it's all about really just understanding the higher time frame narrative so that you can then use those lower time frames just to help you with timing, getting that extra confirmation uh, and getting that extra refinement but I'm not just hopping in any old M1, M1 zone, right? Any M1 entry. That's the last, last thing I'm looking at. It all starts with the higher time frames, okay? So I'm not going to rant on any longer about that. But as we can see, if we look back um, over here, make the line a bit darker so we can see it, the weekly chart switched bullish, right? Because we had the weekly take the low here, right? So it took the low. This was the high at that point. I'll zoom right in so you guys can see it. And then the weekly chart took this high to form a higher high. Uh, and then again, it pulled back, right? It made another higher high here. Price pulled back, tried to form a higher low, right? It tried to take out the high, but it failed to do so. It failed to close below the low. This low then became weak. Price ran that low. And eventually then we had another break of structure and the weekly chart switched bearish. And we have been melting off uh, ever since. So at this point, obviously the trade that you saw I took was a long trade um, and I'm well aware that I'm trying to essentially trade against all of this higher time frame momentum. Uh, price has come off an extreme uh, supply zone at the top of the range, right at the top of that monthly range here, just drawing our weekly zone. Um, and you can see that supply is clearly uh, starting to take control, which then obviously led to that bearish trend change. So we have to be really careful um, in, in trying to, you know, essentially catch a falling knife against a lot of momentum. So we can start to look for areas in which potentially, um, you know, we may see a bit of a weekly pullback. So at this point, you know, we can look at that entire weekly range and then we can drop down to uh, the lower time frames to try and refine this a little bit more. But we can essentially see that this is where the, the weekly demand uh, stepped into the market to lead to that break of structure. Um, and it also took out this supply as well. So it's an extremely decent area of interest to potentially see at least a bit of a reaction. Might not necessarily get a weekly pullback from here. We may be coming a lot lower, um, but we're starting, you know, just with that one time frame to potentially build some bullish trade ideas. OK, so obviously this is a massive weekly range. We want to try and refine it uh, a little bit further so we can start to investigate the price action over here to see if there's any demands that we may wish to look at. Now, this isn't that great of an error because it's all reasonably efficient price action on the daily. Uh, there's nothing super clear, but if I look at the kind of nearest zone to where price is coming at, this would stand out to me um, as a decent potential area where we may see at least a reaction, a bullish reaction, if not potentially uh, a daily and four hour pullback from. Uh, why is this zone decent? Well, I can clearly see Right, this is where price led to uh, supply failing, demand stepping in control. And um, we can also see that when that zone was created, um, it took some liquidity there as well. Um, so these are some of the ways in which uh, I look to validate zones that are, are pretty strong zones. Okay. So we can see that price is starting to tap into the zone. So we've refined our weekly range down to a daily point of interest. But of course, we are melting, um, you know, with, with a lot of uh, a lot of momentum since we had that last daily break of structure. So we've had a daily break of structure up here. Okay. At the moment, we are currently trading between this daily swing high and then obviously whenever, wherever that daily low will form um, at this point, current point in time, this is our daily uh, bearish range. Okay. So what do we expect after a break of structure? You guys will know my, my mechanical process I go through, right? If you've watched um, the market structure series, I'll link up part one uh, somewhere above this video if you haven't seen it already. Highly recommend you watch that out. 
you watch that out. You watch that because, um, yeah, I mean, for the guys that have already watched it, you know, it can massively, massively help uh, with your training just to really know exactly what you're looking for um, and putting that kind of mechanical uh, and logical process behind mapping market structure. So when we get a break of structure on this time frame, what do we expect? We expect a pullback on this time frame. How can we potentially... Uh, you know, tell when that pullback may be kicking in, or uh, we can look for areas of demand where price may react to, or we can look for structure to start to shift. So we can look for that daily change of character, or of course we can drop down to the lower time frames, right, um, and look for the for the four hour to start to switch bullish um, as well. So coming in towards this daily zone. Now again, at this point, um, we are still heavily bearish. So let's map out the range, right? I always want to know where is my swing high and my swing low for the the. Um, uh, time frame I'm on okay so if we look at the four hour structure this is where you need to make sure you go back and you paint the story a little bit just to make sure you've got it right so you know if we go all the way back to here we can see that was the last solid pullback then we took that low there then again we had another break of structure so where's our swing high it's this point here that's the highest point right that took out the low so that's our swing high price then came up it pulled back it took out this high here so then this is our swing low, price pulled all the way back, but it didn't take it out, and then it made another higher high, okay? So then that's our swing high. So where's the lowest point that took out this high after it was formed? Well, we look back here, okay? So this was the lowest point. Price then breaks that low, so that's when the four hour then switched bearish. So then it was playing within this swing high here and this swing low, okay? Price then eventually took out that low, and then that's when it tried to form that daily lower low. So where was the highest point that took out this low after this low was formed? It's this point here, okay, so that's our swing high. Price never breaches it, right? It stays within that range. We then get another break of structure. Now, since we've got that break of structure here on the four hour chart, if I zoom in, for me, this is all part of the swing leg to the downside. So some of you may be viewing, well, is that is that not a pullback? Is that not a lower high there? Well, it can be, it's up to you. But for me personally, I try to follow a reasonably strict guideline. Um, it's not 100% strict, but I, I tend to follow it that on the four hour chart uh, for Euro dollar, um, for me, on the, I like to see kind of at least a 40, 40 pip pullback, okay? So if we measure that, that's only 30 pips. So for me, that's not really swing structure, especially when you look at, you know, the size of that pullback compared to you know, the pullbacks over here, right? You can kind of judge it based on recent price action. So this for me is just a pause in price action. That is not a swing structure. So for me, um, I currently have this as my four hour swing high, right? That's the highest point after the last four hour break uh, of swing structure that we got. And obviously our swing low would be down here somewhere. Uh, whenever we then um, potentially pull back. So at this point, um, you know, I don't want to be getting long. Yes, we're tapping into a weekly range of demand. Yes, we're tapping into daily demand. Um, but, you know, looking for longs at this point, you can do it, but you're fighting a hell of a lot of momentum. Okay, so let's just push forward, push price forward a little bit. Okay, and then you see when you see something like this, we're in an area of high time frame interest, but then you see a massive candle with a big wick like that. Okay, that is you know, 35 pips or so, 36 pips. Eurodollar is probably, yeah, well, it is the most traded currency in the world. I think it's a seven or eight trillion dollar market, uh, the FX market, the amount of volume that goes to the FX market a day. To move a currency pair like this, that amount of pips within that short space of time, that takes a hell of a lot of money, a hell of a lot of volume to do that. Um, so, Basically, and to keep it very simple, that is a hell of a lot of demand stepping into the market. So whenever I see something like that, you know, I, I'm always aware in the back of my mind that potentially, um, you know, demand stepping in now, I mean, may start to see uh, that pullback kick into the market. But like I was saying, after we have a break of structure, right, so our four hour break of structure was all the way up here. What do we expect, right? We expect, if I can get the line to actually work for me. Here we go. So this was the last four hour uh, break of structure up here. We expect a four hour pullback, okay? The moment we get that break of structure, but this is a perfect example of like, we never know when that when that pullback will occur. It, it could take ages. So we use structure to give us that signal and we wait for that bullish change of character. But as you can see, price pretty much just stays bearish the entire time, right? We continue to make lows. Every time we have those small internal pullbacks, we continue to stay bearish. And then we had another minor pullback here because that white candle is an inside bar. So it failed to break the prior candles low. So this is all part of the down move, right? And then we continue down. So at this point, for me to get a bullish change of character, I want to see that most recent internal high go, okay? So that's my four hour change of character. Just make it a little bit more prominent there, okay? Now we've tapped into the daily demand. We're seeing a big um, sign that potentially demand stepping into the market, but just being a little bit more patient. No point in trying to jump in long just yet. Of course you can do it, but right now I just kind of want to focus uh, on these really high probability positions when you're trying to trade counter trend against a hell of a lot of momentum. 
So wait for that four hour change of character. Now another thing you can do actually, which I'll uh, often do as well, is when you see a big reaction like that, scroll all the way back and go and investigate what did price react to today, uh, react to because it's probably an old area of demand. And then what do we have over here? You can see we have this sweep, okay? If I mark out this four hour zone here, uh, yeah, so we have that daily zone there. We have this four hour zone here, and that is the extreme of the reaction that actually took out the extreme supply zone, okay? So this is another great way of validating, yes, we are coming off a very, very significant level, right? The base of that demand that led to that supply failing, which then led to the daily and the weekly uh, switching bullish, and it also swept liquidity when it was formed, okay? So now we can drag this all the way across to current price section. And we're just building a little bit more confluence, right? Putting some logic behind why price is very likely, you know, having such a strong reaction from this area. But again, we don't need to jump into any trades. We can wait for what? We can wait for that four hour change of character. Boom, now we've had it, okay? So four hour change of character, all I need to see is a wick break above that high. Um, and that's enough to, to show me, um, you know, that, that first sign that structure is starting to fail and we're starting to move to the upside and supply is failing as well. So now what we can do um, is jump down to the 15 minute, okay? Because that four hour change of character, is signaling the four hour may pull back. And you guys who have watched the market structure series will know that not always, but a lot of the time, a change of character on one time frame is a break of swing structure on a lower time frame. So let's go and investigate what that four hour change of character looks like um, on the 15 minute. So if I can get this to work, there we go. So as we can see, this four hour change of character here is actually a 15 minute break of structure to uh, the upside so that means that the 15 minute has now switched bullish okay so we've come off this uh four hour demand level nested within our daily demand level if we look at the 15 minute swing structure right this was our last true swing pullback we moved down this is all part of the down move then we had a swing pullback okay and then we took this low so that would be our highest point that took out the low, right? After this low was formed and we pulled back, where's the highest point that led to that break of structure? It's that point there, okay? So that is why that is marked out as my M15 swing high. Price has now broken and closed above it. So remember for swing structure, I need to see a break and closure above it. Okay, that's what we've now got. Um, but all we have at this point is the M15 switching bullish, forming a higher high and the four hour change of character. Now for me personally, I've said this before, the moment we get uh, a break enclosure above a swing high, a lower high to form a higher high, that for me is enough to confirm a bullish trend change. Now, a lot of other people, they want to see both a higher high and a higher low, okay, for there to be that confirmation. Now, we will never know where that higher low is until it forms a higher high, okay, right? You can't know, you know, you could guess, uh, let's say this moves forward a little bit, right? At this point here, you could start to anticipate that this may be the higher low, but that is never confirmed until what? That is never confirmed until a higher high is made. So if price was to go up then and form that, right? So then you have a single break of structure and then you have the double break of structure. Now you have a lot more confirmation. So again, if I can try and explain that in a bit more simple terms, is that some people will need to see both a higher high and a higher low for the market to be confirmed switching to bullish, okay? So for them to have that high low as well, that means that they need to basically see a double break of swing structure to have that confirmation. Because at this point, I've seen a higher high, that is enough for me to call it bullish, but obviously I like a bit more confluence. And if we are to get that double break of structure, right, when we're trying to trade against all of that higher time frame momentum, um, that is gonna be a hell of a lot more confidence for, for me. So what I do is I'll mark out this swing high here, and then we can wait to see if price is gonna actually make that higher high, confirming that we then have Obviously, with the benefit of hindsight, this will speed up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so at this point here, we now have a double break of structure. So we now have a confirmed M15 higher high. And now we've confirmed where the higher low is. Okay, so now what we do is we mark out the new range we're playing within. This is my next swing low. And then we can wait for price to start to pull back. So then I know where my swing high is. Okay, so we started to pull back. This is my next swing range that we are within on the M15. Okay, so I'll just fast forward price to about 6 a.m. when I get to my desk before the London session. So about here, okay. Now, just to kind of qu quickly recap what we're doing, we're obviously heavily, heavily bearish on the higher time frames, right? We don't want to be catching a falling knife, but we have seen what? We've seen a huge, huge reaction. Um, you know, that, that is massive, right? A massive amount of demand stepping in. We've looked left to validate what is price reacting to, to try and provide a bit more confluence and logic behind that move. We've seen that we are within a weekly 
demand range. We're in a daily demand zone within that weekly range. And within all of that, we have found a four hour demand zone um, that led to supply failing, that led to a break of structure, and it also took liquidity as well, okay? And we've seen that very strong V-shaped move up there that led to a break of structure. So at that point, for me, the M15 is then confirmed bullish when we have a close above that lower high. Um, but then we pull back and then we had another break of structure to the upside. So now we have a confirmed higher high, an M15 higher high, right? And a confirmed M15 higher low. Um, and that, remember that break of structure on the M15 is a four hour change of character, okay? So we had the four hour chalk, the M15 double break of structure. So there's a hell of a lot more confluence now. Essentially, I'm trying to paint the story right that the four hour may be pulling back and the daily may be pulling back. So we're just adding more confluence to looking for longs, right? So as I get to my desk, I've now marked out the swing range I'm within, right? I'm within this swing low here and this swing low on the M15. I know I want to try and uh, play long with the bullish M15 trend to capitalize on a potential four hour and daily pullback, okay? So I mark out POIs that I'm interested in. Obviously, I can see I've already got this one marked out. Why am I interested in this POI here? Well, a few confluences that we can go through. If I mark out from the swing low to the swing high, right? Premium discount tool. Watch my previous video. I'll link that up here if you haven't seen it, right? This can quickly really help you just to validate, you know, I want to be buying in those cheaper prices. I want to be buying in the discount of the range. And we can see anywhere below this red line, below the equilibrium, below the 50% level is discount pricing. And that's a really decent area straight away, right? And then it quickly tells you, you don't really want to be buying up here in the premium, okay? Another thing we have, if I just extend this across, is we have these equal lows building right in front of my demand zone, okay? So we have that inducement, that liquidity ready to be swept, right? If there's a lot of buying interest, which that we think there is here, um, you know, there's a lot of big, uh, you know, let's say institutional level of buying that entered in here previously. Why was there, or how can we validate that there was a lot of buying interest? Well, we can start to look for where supply um, was failing, right? We get this reaction here. This is the extreme of the reaction that caused supply to fail that led to the break of structure. What also happened? Well, this POI swept liquidity when it was formed, okay? All of these things really help us to validate our POIs. We have inducement in front of it. Um, so at this point, all I'm waiting for then is I set my alert for price to come into my POI. Okay, and then we get um, that move essentially. Uh, you know, I won't go too in depth in the M1 entry model because it wouldn't be fair on the members. Um, but that's essentially once we see that move, we've confirmed the level. I've seen everything I need to see. Okay, um, set your entry order. Two pip stop on this looks huge, but you know, um, you know, you can get away with tighter stops if you wish to do so. But I've just found you know longevity. Um, you know, I don't want to be getting slipped with anything less than than less than two pips there. So, yeah, I'm more than happy with that to be consistent now. Getting into the trade, that's only half the battle. You need to know exactly where you were going to be exiting, uh, looking to pay yourself once you're in that trade, okay, before you've even entered it. Now, remember, yes, we are playing with the M15 trend, right? We're training pro trend, but we are against the four hour and the daily trend. And we have to be aware that that daily and four hour pullback, right? This move here could be about to form that lower high at any point and roll over to form that next lower low. So let's have a quick look on the four hour chart and see where the next nearest sort of POI is where I would be expecting potentially we could see a bit of a reaction or that lower high form. So the nearest area of interest we have is this four hour zone here, okay? Then if we drop back down to the 15 minute, we can then try and refine that zone a little bit more because it's obviously quite a large zone just to help with some accuracy and retirement. Refinement, not retirement. <laughs> Uh, there we go. So we have this M15 zone, okay? Now for me, because I'm trading counter trends, like I keep saying, you're probably sick of hearing me saying it, um, I don't personally like to swing for the fences. And what you'll see a lot of time, I'm fully aware that I leave a hell of a lot of profit on the table doing this, but I personally like to take a lot of my volume off at the nearest uh, M15 weak structure, okay? So remember, this is a weak M15 high this high here. Why is this weak? It's weak because it failed to do its job. It failed to take out the low. It failed to make a lower low. So as we look to get for longs, right, we know that we can target this high um, for price to then tap into that external range liquidity, okay? So that's a pretty good area to take off um, a lot of volume. And I banked a lot there. I believe it was around 10R, yeah, just over 10R. Um, yeah, again, I know I leave a lot of profit on the table, but this is just what is most congruent with my personality. What I find the easiest to trade, um, you know, you don't want to be fighting yourself every day, fighting digital, digital candlesticks all day long, right? You need to find that plan um, you know, that is most congruent with you. But again, I don't want to get into a psychology rant just now. So essentially, that's where a lot of volume was taking off. Now we get a, a break and close above that high there. So then we can mark out the new swing range that we are within, right? And then you can continue to follow, um, you know, the, the ranges and look for potential further buying opportunities. Okay, we get another break of structure here. 
right we didn't really pull back that deep that time but now we know the next swing range we are within okay just con continually adjust the range you're within um, and this can really help you just to um, yeah produce intraday trade ideas right so then we have what do we have the extreme demand down here that led to the break of structure uh, supply failing uh, and it took liquidity when it was formed so that would be a decent area to look at but you have to be aware at this point we're getting very very close to uh, that four hour supply level now um, so let's play this forward a bit and essentially I just towards coming to the end of the day set a pretty you know arbitrary um profit target to get me out for the 25 r there around that m15 supply level um because we were also coming to the end of the day so as you can see here i entered around 7 a.m frankfurt open um and as, as we get to around london closing around 4 p.m gmt uh, i typically don't like to be um really in any trades at that point especially if i'm counter trend i'm happy to just bank my volume uh, and move on and then that's where i was tagged uh, out of the position uh, for all the remaining um, volume for 25R, okay? And obviously at this point, you can start to potentially anticipate that that four hour low or high is gonna form. So we start to see a bit of a reaction from that M15 supply level nested within the four hour supply level. And then this is where you can pay attention, right? If we've come up, if I look at the four hour chart, right? If we've now pulled back and we've come into an area of supply and we're expecting potentially a lower high may form, what can we use to indicate that potentially the four hour pullback has finished? and the next four hour swing run is about to commence. We wait for a change of character, right? And of course we can do the same thing on the lower time frames. Obviously the higher the time frame you go, the more confirmation you have, but here you can look, right, for a change of character in the M15 because we've come into a refined supply level and you can see that price just spiked the high there, which means that we now have a new internal low, right? Where was the low that took the high? This is that low there, okay? So now if this low goes, which we have, we now have an M15 change of character. And then this is where you could potentially look to take a short entry. So then if we jump down to the M1, what do we have here? Okay, we can see that high was swept there. We've then had a M15 change of character here. And then if we mark out that M1 entry up here, all right, decent area for just line up to look for potential short stream zone, very high probability at this point in terms of all of the higher time frames um, aligning. And then boom, play this forward. Now, this would never be a trade that I would take live, but it's just understanding um, you know, what is going on here. Why is the main reason? Well, because you look at the session timing, it's around 10 p.m. GMT. That is the daily close. That is when spreads blow out and widen. Um, but I kind of just wanted to show you guys that uh, yeah, it's possible you could have caught that four hour lower high uh, with extreme precision uh, and accuracy. But obviously, you know, this is another thing again for another topic. But when you're back testing, if you take trades like that, you know, don't chuck that in your back test and say, oh, I made, you know, 89R down to the lows because in reality you can't take that trade. But yeah, anyway, that's beyond this video. So we can talk about that um, another time. But so let's do a super quick recap of what we just did here. So I can get this to zoom out. Weekly chart, right? We we're coming down into this weekly range of demand, this range of demand, right? But we were super, super bearish, uh, but we're potentially anticipating that we may see a bit of a bullish reaction from here. The daily chart was heavily bearish as well. Um, but we marked out a potential area of demand within that level, right, which took out supply, led to a break of structure and swept liquidity when it formed. We then jumped down to the four hour chart. And this is where we saw that big demand starting to step into the market. OK, and um, we looked left. We validated the area of demand that it came into. But what did we also do? We waited for that shift in market structure. We waited for that four hour change of character. What is that change of character most likely going to be in a lower time frame? Not always, but it's most likely a break of structure. And that's exactly what this four hour change of character was over here. It was the M15 switching bullish. We then waited for another double break of structure because then that gives us both a higher high and a higher low, right? Really giving us confirmation now that the M15 has switched bullish to facilitate that daily and four hour pullback, okay? So then we mark out the new swing range that we are within coming into the London session. We're nowhere between this high and between this low. We identify high probability POIs by using our premium and discount, by looking at where the demand took out supply, where the demand leads to the break of structure, you know, where was liquidity swept, where will liquidity be induced? We set our alerts on the POI, we drop down to our execution timeframe to get that extra confirmation, to boost our strike rate, to boost our risk to reward, and then we pay ourselves along the way because we are trading counter trend, right? We don't need to be heroes. Um, take your 
profits off at decent levels that makes sense okay where is price likely going to pull back it's going to pull back after it sweeps the external range liquidity behind those weak structures okay so on and so forth you can of course continue to look for scalings and then um, you know look to pay the majority of your volume take that off as you come towards the end of the session day but more importantly you're coming into those high time frame uh, levels of supply where they may be forming those lower highs to continue the overall bearish trend where then of course we saw that 15 minute change of character up in that level um, nice m1 entry but just not really good for session timing there and then yeah we dumped off coming into london the next day there was a trade there that you could have caught um, i do have this in my markups in a telegram analysis channel uh, which is free link below a uh, little plug there if you want to jump in there tons of free alpha there post it every day <laughs> uh, there's your little sales pitch um, yeah, this is one I was to totally missed, but essentially you can see the logic behind here, right? Sell to buy wicks, that's demand on a lower time frame. We then have this flip here where supply into the market uh, and then boom. Funny's your aunt, Bob's your uncle, you're off. Let's go and smash all the way down to the lows. But I'll leave it there. This went on for longer than I anticipated. I wanted this to be a quick 10 minute video, but as always, I end up going into, um, yeah, uh, well, hopefully, it's, hopefully you guys take value from it, right? Going into um, a lot of detail. Of course, you know, if you guys want to really learn how to do this, I have an extensive course that, that takes, um, you know, everything from A to Z, if you know nothing about trading, all the way through to really advanced technical analysis stuff tons of exercises in there that I give you right and then you can practice uh, and compare your your walkthroughs right uh, your your analysis compared to my walkthroughs and it's yeah it's just a really dynamic way um, of learning how to how to apply everything that you've learned and of course we also have the the photo service where I post um, my commentaries every single week go in insane depth in all of the prior price action um, on both the higher time frames and the lower time frames um, just so you can really you know understand all of the probabilities all the probabilities all of the possible entries that there were um, for the previous week uh, and then of course we have the, the the discord as well right where I answer all of your questions I post analysis every single day um, before uh, you know all of the sessions and then markups as well after each of the sessions to show you um, all of the trades as well yeah so if you are interested there's your plug um, if you want to come and join us I would love to work with you uh, yeah and help you smash your trading goals if you want to level up coming into 2022 so i'll leave that there as always hope you guys took some value from that peace out